Let's go! Greetings everyone, Mission Bart here. Hope you're having a fantastic day and oh my god am I so happy it's this time of the year. It is Nintendo at the time of the year where I like to play Nintendo games, classic Nintendo games, and oh, I, I mean I am doing back-to-back -back specials, you know, back-to-back -back special months, themed months. Wish, wish I could spread them out a little bit more, but these are the cards I've been dealt. I mean, we've got Tomb Raider in March as well, and Star Wars in May. Oh my god. I just, you know, a, a third of my year is spent doing something themed. I mean, admittedly, I'm doing alien stuff in April as well, so oh, it, it, it just keeps adding up. No. Anyway, Nintendo 2023. So if you haven't um, seen the posts, that I put up. I've got a uh, community post on YouTube and I've got a post on Mastodon just to kind of say this is what we're doing for the month Nintendo. It's classic Nintendo games and you know uh, we'll be doing the likes of uh, Mario 3, Star Fox 64, uh, Majora's Mask which Majora's Mask is going to be a bit special because that's going to be randomized. Mm, I'm already hating myself already just thinking about it. Anyway anyway oh let us dive into, quite frankly, one of my favourite Mario games of all time, Mario 3. Now, last year I said, is Super Mario World my favourite Mario game? And you know what? I, I find myself a bit sort of uh, bipolar on it to a certain extent. I flip-flop a lot on my favourite Mario game. And um, Mario 3 is definitely up there as one of my favourites. Uh, because it's so good. It, it basically set up the hallmarks for what you expect from a Mario 2D platformer. You know, the new Super Mario games follow the formula so closely. You know, it's um, Grassland, Desert World, you know, Water World by about World 3. You know, there's going to be a Snow World at some point, a Sky World. You know, it's... <laughs> Mario 3 is arguably very good, but also very problematic for the series because, as I said, it sets all these hallmarks. It sets these... It makes it formulaic, which is not necessarily a bad thing. Formula to your game is not a bad thing. It just depends on how you explore and expand on your existing formulas. But I'm getting... I'll, I'll, you know, I'll try and play and talk at the same time about this. Because we have quite a lot that... Well, I, say, <laughs> I always say this. I say this with a lot of my videos. It's always like this. We've got a lot of ground to cover. And to a certain extent, we do. And I need to adjust my border so slightly oh no there we go it should be there oh no I've messed up everything now no everything's wrong <laughs> i'm i always thought the main the main menu had music to it but apparently it doesn't maybe i'm thinking of um Mario All-Stars, which is the version that I played mostly when I was a kid. I mostly played the Mario All-Stars version of this. Um, because even though I had um, an NES when I was a very little kid, I don't remember it in the slightest. A lot of my memories of Mario basically come from Mario All-Stars. And, you know, this wasn't my favourite Mario game at the time when I was a kid, mostly because it was too... For, for me at the time, it was too difficult. I like Mario 2, um, and, you know, Mario 2, and Mario World, because I could beat those games, <laughs> which is not a good way to kind of... Oh, okay. Never mind. I could have gone in that pipe, but never mind. Um, and really, the aim of what we're going to be doing here today is we will be... Trying to basically play through as much, you know, clear as many stages in this game as we can. Um, I, I want to try and do as close to a 100% sort of playthrough of this. And, oh, this is just, it's such a, oh, I probably shouldn't have done that. We won't get the warp whistles. Mostly because the warp whistles will take up inventory space, and I need that inventory space. I'll, sh I'll tell you where they are, by all means. Um, and you have to forgive me because the um, I could <laughs> I'm doing this via the um, Switch Online service, the uh, virtual console thing that they have. So I'm recording this on my Ava Media capture card. So there will be a ever so slight delay. That was annoying, but oh well, forget the star, don't need it. 
So there will be a slight delay between um, how I react to certain things and what you're seeing on the screen, which is, yeah, these things happen. But yeah, I I always found, I enjoyed this game, but I always found it too difficult. Now, I did get, I, I, I did beat it as a kid. Now, where is that? There it is. I did beat it as a kid. It was challenging. Uh... <laughs> because um, it was just a lot harder than Mario 2. Mario, the original Mario Bros. I didn't beat that game until I played it on the Game Boy Color. <laughs> yeah, that says a lot about me, doesn't it? My game playing skills. I pride myself on being okay at games, but... I... I was able to get, like, the warp whistles and get to World 8, because to get one of the warp whistles, you can sort of crouch on this block here. After a couple of seconds, you'll fall through. This will basically put you behind the stage, if you will, because the entire thing about this game is it's kind of, it's set as like a, a weird like stage play, but we are just gonna go boof, get our five extra lives. So yeah, it, it, it is kind of, there's some interesting lore around all the sort of like the fact that it's a stage play and whatnot um and i think they confirmed it if i remember correctly so you know the game is actually not quite what you think it is <laughs> it's, it's kind of cool in that way but um the point i was gonna make was this game i i played it a lot as a kid i was very good at some of the later worlds we're talking you know what was one two and four i was all right with world three i kind of struggled with um world five i would struggle once i hit the clouds world six the sort of the latter half of it i would struggle with and then world seven i just couldn't do world seven world seven was awful for me as a kid and it's still like one of those things that i kind of do not look forward to whenever i play this game <laughs> world seven world eight is um well, it isn't so bad, and like you, you understand why it's not so bad when we get to it. It's just you don't have to worry too much because there's not that many stages, and once you clear most of them, uh, they're gone for good. It will make sense when it, it, it will make sense when we get there. <laughs> he says. Yeah. Ah yes, the rigged, this, this this rigged game here. I'm not even gonna bother. I never try with this because it is so <laughs> the, the the picture match thing is it's such a rigged mini game. It is kind of fun, but it's it's best of luck to you. Hmm. No, I don't want the firefly. I want to keep the um the raccoon tail because the raccoon power up is just the best. Slow fall and um, the tail swipe attack. It's just great. I must admit, there are moments when the Fire Flower is more useful. Hammer Brothers and all that. The Hammer Brothers in this game are nowhere near as bad as they are in like um, Mario 1 and Lost Levels. Speaking of Lost Levels, um, I used to, pl again, as I was explaining, I used to play this game, the All-Stars version of it, back when I was a kid. And um, that included playing All-Stars Mario Lost Levels. And I actually beat Lost Levels before I beat original Mario, mostly because Lost Levels on the on that version, it's the game saved. Oh, hello. The game saved after every level. Um... Oh my, I know, I know there's a flower there, but I messed this up. Yep, messed up. Ugh. Now I said hammer bubbles aren't so bad, but I'm now like panicking because I messed that up. Gotcha. So I need to break all the blocks because I already have a power up and you can't stock them in this. Nice. But yeah, uh, so yes, 
Mario All Stars makes a lot of these games, a lot of these old Mario games, much easier. I think the only one that is by and large unchanged is um, is Mario Two. Mario Two is a very strange game, but it's still enjoyable in its own weird kind of way. And I will, I'll get to that eventually. My aim is not next year or the year. <laughs> Next year I'll do Mario 64, I know that for a fact. I, I've been meaning to get back onto that for ages. Particularly the, um... Because I've, I've got the, um... On my Switch, I have the Mario, uh... I've got the Mario 3D All-Stars collection. Because I had to get that the moment it came out, because what kind of die-hard Mario fan wouldn't have that? <laughs> so yeah. I, I just love this game so much. I love Mario games in general. That I would be the kind of person who'd say there isn't a bad Mar mm. yeah, there are a couple of bad Mario games. Um, Mario Sticker Star. I I played Sticker Star, and there was a part of me that I wanted to like that game, and there were parts of it I did enjoy. And in other parts, I was just like, no, this this is just frustrating. And I, I picked it up a couple of months, but no, maybe, maybe okay. About a year ago, I, I picked it up again to kind of be like, okay, let, let's let's play this again. Let, let's see what, um, I tried playing it and I'm like, I have no clue what's going on. So I, you know, I am not even going to bother. <laughs> but is, is it, does that make it a bad game? No, I don't think so. It makes it frustrating and maybe a bit sort of um, it's you know it's nowhere near as good as um, some of the other some of the other Mario RPGs. But I, I wouldn't say it's a like a terrible game. But then again, this is coming from someone who never who never finished it. Who only yeah. <laughs> and yes, I know it is like awful in comparison to the other Paper Mario games, you know. Mario Thousand Year Door, original Paper Mario, amazing games, and it was, it was, like, I, I get it, I get the disappointment, I am not, I am not saying that, you know, I'm not saying it's, it's, like, forgiven for being disappointing compared to the other things, but then again, you know, I am the person who likes Castlevania 2. I like Final Fantasy 2. And there is this element where, you know, oh, and that was annoying. Mixing up the formula is not a terrible thing. I think, unfortunately, Ma Paper Mario didn't set its pre set a precedent, unfortunately, with the, um, with Mario. Paper Mario and Thousand Year Door. Obviously, Super Paper Mario changed things up a bit, but everyone kind of accepted that as being a outlier, as opposed to a this is how things are going to be going forward. And I'm not, and I I understand. I I I, I do empathise, but at the same time, I, I I don't know. I maybe I'm too much of an apologist. <laughs> I'm too much of a Mario apologist. And this this is what you get for growing up. Oh, I should have read Peach, Princess Peach's letter. Curses. I should. I probably should be reading the other bits of dialogue that are coming up. But you know, it's. I'm just enjoying playing the game. Oh, uh, having been playing like horror themed games, it's just nice to play something that's like this. This is very much a cozy game for me. There is nothing cozier in this world than just sitting back with, oh, with a Mario game. Now there is a, there it is. I think, no? Ah, oh, there it is. I knew it. <laughs> there, are, there are little secrets, little things that I just remember from. Now, is there something up in the sky? Probably, but I'm not going to worry too much about it. I've played a lot of Mario for me, so there's little things. Little things I remember, but also there's so much that I don't know about. As much as I like to say, hey, I know what I'm doing. No, no, there's still loads that I don't know about. 
All right, let, let's see if we can actually do this. What have we got? We've got mushroom. That's flower. I, I, I really... It's knowing what frame you need to press it on. That's the problem. But yeah, as, as I kind of said in the intro, you know, the fact that, you know, this is the game that first had... Actually, even then, if you consider that Mario Bros. 2 did a desert world as the second one, maybe that is... What... Did that set a precedent? I don't think so. Mario Bros. I should have hit the P-Switch. There was a P-Switch further back and I should have hit that. But, um, yeah. This game just set the standard and for how every single, particularly when, once we hit new Super Mario, once the new Super Mario Bros. games came out, they basically used this game as the template and that's not necessarily a bad thing. I feel that where New Super Mario Brothers didn't work was maybe the the reliance on that world structure. And this is where Mario Bro Super Mario World is a better game. Um it's, it's it's a better sort of like this this is you know, this is how the franchise is gonna move. We are gonna do a so this congruous, I think is the word I want to use, you know, just this continue, this is world, you know, you, it, Mario World suffers a little bit because of that, but that's only because in terms of the, in terms of the variety of stages, there isn't as much variety, you know, there isn't, a desert world there isn't really any ice stages um but it creates this sort of it creates this living breathing world that is somewhat believable okay mushroom there's always a mushroom there uh, one up i think you no it's not there curses there's the one up now oh, i think the 10 coins was up there yes it was Oh, another mushroom. No. Uh, no, fire flower. Guesses. Oh, actually, this is a toad hut. You know, I want to do the toad huts. I don't really think I do want to do the toad huts, proof be told. Because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to collect up so many power ups that I won't know what to do with them. We should have part of the problem. But, uh, and I mean, a lot of the, a lot of the later games do try to just like slim down this, the, the world aspect of it. Music box, useful in world seven, not particularly useful here. You know, there, there's, they try to do like, so what I'm trying to get at with the world with the maps here is you have the little like coin markers uh, around the world map, which allow you know to kind of give the Cooper Troopers, not Cooper Troopers, Hammer Brothers, spaces to move to and you know be these like um, well you know almost like semi-random encounters almost, and they kind of simplified that in uh, the later games, and I kind of ah. Oh, I kind of don't like that so much. I kind of like the fact that you kind of have a bit of space between worlds or stages. I don't know. Kind of makes it weirdly more believable for me, but... Mm. I, mean, it... I don't know. I, I, I feel like I'm talking nonsense to a certain extent. Which is very much the case. I will chat nonsense worth playing games like this. Ah! The dreaded quicksand stage. <laughs> the fact that, you know... It's quite... This world has two unique level markers. Let's just jump past the tornado and... Eh, kill the sun. Plunge, plunge the world into a never-ending never night. God, you... you re <laughs> that realisation that I've just... 
got rid of the sun on this stage and it must make like the entire world so, must deserts get super cold at night <laughs> to the point where they get dangerously cold at night you know what we're gonna not deal with the hammer brothers because i've got this horrible feeling that i'm gonna get punked by them if i try oh well we'll, we'll go to it they drop a hammer right and which is useful if they kill me, I'll just pop into a state. Oh no, it's the boomerang brothers. <laughs> what did I say? Right, let's go get power up. Oh man, if I only had my tail, I could fly up to the top there. Right. E. Ah, oh, dear, dear, dear. Oh. Oh, uh, no! Oh, fucking, fucking Boomerang Brothers! Like, whoever designed the Hammer Brothers is a genius and also the most, like, like annoying game designer in the world. They are, they are a nemesis in a lot of these games. Well designed. The, the sort of semi-random sort of um, attack patterns, oh geez, just makes them a pain to deal with. At the point where I don't want to deal with them, <laughs> truth be told, but we will. We're going to try and clear as, as many, we're going to try and clear as many of the world map sort of um, entities, if you will. I don't even know what I'm going to call them. Now, I'm not going to go use the hammer to get to the... Oh, Christ, your chain chomps. How can I forget about you, chain chomp? We're going to try and clear out as many of the um, world map. Is there not a... No, I'm thinking, I'm thinking later on there is a... Um, I'm thinking way over here. There is a... Oh, I always used to like doing this. Ah, I don't know, that, that just used to tickle me as a kid. I was not very, um, what's the word I'm looking for? <laughs> I was easily entertained as a child. That's why I play Mario games, easily entertained. <laughs> no, that, that's mean. Again, these games are good. Oh, yeah, that's right. The P-Switch is um, in that one, isn't it? Yes. Curses. Doesn't matter. We don't need coins. We're, we're, we're not here. We're not here for coins. We're here for clearing stages, clearing stages, and taking names and getting a high score. The thing, the, the true, you know, measures of worth in a game back in the eighties and nineties, you know, high scores. <laughs> oh dear. So let's 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 try this again. Okay, fire flower. God damn it! <laughs> oh what? Well, I know if I got mushroom at the top, it would have been fine, but no, no. And there's a pyramid stage. Yeah, there's something about World Two in this game is just so, like for the time, so creative. You, know, you have the, you you have a quicksand stage. You have a stage inside a. Pyramid. Ah. Oh. Do you know what other game was super creative in regards to the stages? Mario Land 2 for the Game Boy. An amazing game. And if you've never played it, oh my god, you're missing out. It's so good. Yeah, I, I, I don't know why I'm getting... I don't even know why I'm bothering. I think there's a... I think there's some extra lives at the top, actually, if you... want to... Back about with that, but yeah. This is... Oh no! Lost my power up just just before the boss stage. Brilliant. No hammer, brother. I'm not playing with you today. <laughs> oh my word. Oh sure. Let, let's let's clear up the um. Let's clear up this mini game. So we've got a fire flower. We know a fire flower's down there. Another star, I 
Yes. No. No. Okay. Oh, but you know what? I really shouldn't have failed that. I really shouldn't have messed that one up. Never mind. Oh, it's terrible! The king has been transformed! Please find the magic wand so we can change him back! Yeah! Wait, I don't, I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> Voice acting is not my thing. I mean, it's, it's a practice thing. And quite frankly, I don't practice, like, I don't practice reading dialogue as other characters, like, as much as I should? I don't know. I feel like I should at least, like, try to have, like, a... I, sh I should try to unlock some voices. <laughs> that would certainly make things a little bit more interesting. Also, I, I didn't, like, talk about the airship stages in this. Ah, oh, the airship stages are so cool. Just, you know, people hate, you know, we all hate auto-scrollers, but there's something that's kind of, like, weirdly enjoyable about the, um, weirdly enjoyable about the airship stages. And I think it's because it, aesthetically, it's cool. And, you know, the... The auto scrolling kind of makes a little bit of sense. Oh, come on. That should probably. No, wait, no. I did not hit you with enough fire flowers to. It's amazing how many times you've got to hit them with the fire flower. Jeez. <laughs> oh, my word. Now, I'm hoping the volume of the music's coming through okay. I might bump it up for the next one, because I'm just looking at the little bars for it, and it's like, not that high. Oh, thank heavens! I'm back to my old self again! Thank you so much! Here's a letter from the princess! <laughs> oh, princess. What have you got for me? you got me Cloud, haven't you? Yes! <laughs> Greetings! You can stomp on your enemies using Goomba Shoe. I have enclosed the jewel that helps protect... It's such a weird, like... I have enclosed a jewel to help protect. The cloud allows you to bypass stages. I don't think that, that doesn't really protect you. <laughs> Peach! <laughs> get your butt together. <laughs> get your butt together. Butt together? No. Um, right, so we're now in world three. So what I'm going to do very quickly is I'm just going to save it here. And we are going to end things at this point right now. Because quite frankly, you know, we, we've... We've made a decent amount of progress. I, I don't know how long this is going to take me. I've estimated like... I've estimated six parts. Um, because I know the worlds get longer, the levels get more complicated. And... I'll, I mean, this, this world alone has like... 10 stages, I think? And no, I think that, that doesn't include fortresses. There's a lot going on in World 3. It's, surpri it's a surprisingly big world. And it's no wonder why I never really cleared it as a kid. That well, I cleared it a couple of times. And I did clear it, I, I, because there are shortcuts you can take to skip a whole load of stages. So, you know, there, there, are, ways of, there, there are ways of means for this. Anyway, with that all said, and I hope you've enjoyed this. There'll be links to my socials in the description below. And I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Bye for now. <laughs> hey, thanks for joining me on this first part of Nintendo with Super Mario Bros. 3. No Nintendo and card this time, but maybe next year. Anyway, if you haven't subscribed to my channel already, you can click on me right there. Otherwise, over there, there'll be a playlist for last year's Nintendo, as well as some other stuff for you to enjoy. I'll see you around. <laughs>